following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse with your host, John Logan. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Hi guys, welcome to the show. I hope you're seeing my charts here. We're showing the <laughs> showing the S and P's here. They had a little bit of a breakdown. We're going to review that really quick. Let's take a look at the two forties. Uh, you know, this is you know rattling around right at the bottom of a fair auction on a short term time frames. Um, we talked about you know not really getting too excited about this S and P trade above twenty seventy. Okay, I can getting getting wind that we're not seeing our charts yet. But okay, so let's let's kind of deviate from that just a tad until we get our charts up. Um, we talked about you know looking at our breadth situation on our proprietary task profile scanner plus version, which uh, Tommy's kind of working out the details of how you guys get hold of this outside of the web version. But I've got our S and P breadth up right now. Um, we've done some adjustments here. Uh, and we're looking at our breast situation, and we, we talked about, you know, kind of the flip-flop situation. Now, these dials will move over a little bit when the market opens. Remember that the kind of the crux of this product is, as far as the breadth part goes, is, you know, it's, it's based itself on the internals of the S&P 500, the Hong Kong, uh, Hang Seng Index, Shanghai, the Singapore, NASDAQ, Eurostox 50, Nifty 50, Bovespa, Cold Cap, Colombia, Bursa, Malaysia, Thai Set 100, Mexico, Inmax, and now we've got the Nikkei 225. And I think, Michael, we've got the FTSE going in here, right? Don't we have the FTSE in the scanner, but now we're getting the breath on board? Okay, so we're going to have the FTSE 100 breath on board. So you're going to be able to kind of really cruise through these things and watch the dials move and, and kind of see where the internals are relative to our TAS profiles. And, and that's a pretty powerful feature. So it's really, a again, a product that you know, has a couple of different cool features in it. But the, the, but the main two separations are we've got our breadth, which is derived out of the internals of the, of the indexes that we're looking at. And we've also got a great filtering system. So that filtering system you know, we've been through that a couple of zillion times. Um, what you guys are also going to see is a very concise kind of composite view as far as things that I would say, because we I think our Word document was about 123 pages long on the if-thens on this. So it kind of gives you a little bit of a dissertation um, on what's going on in the particular index, as I would say it. And as we look at the S&Ps now, going back to what I was originally going to say, um, the market's not open yet. And unfortunately, these stocks don't trade 24 hours a day. Maybe that's fortunate. I'm not sure. But uh, as they open, we're going to see some things flip around a little bit here. Um, the S&Ps obviously are down seven or eight points pre-market. I think we've been as low as 10 points down pre-market. So what does that mean? That means that some of the rallies that we've had off of these daily and for highs breaking above, we've talked about passing on these because it wasn't really a clear sign. Yeah, um, it wasn't really a, you know, we talked about, you know, we always talk about where's the risk, you know, what's the riskier trade? The riskier trade, in my opinion, was to go against some of the things that we talked about with the breath, some of the, some of the internals of this particular index and maybe pass on some longs because there wasn't really a clear sign that it was all systems go. Um, and as we look at what's going on now with the index, you know, we're pretty much, I mean, if you look at it, we're, we're 20 points above the breakout. We, you know, most of the, you know, Europe has obviously been on fire. The DAX pulled back significantly. We're going to go through that in a little bit, but you know, the, the global indices, which have just been on a catapult, um, have surpassed the movements up in the S and P's trading above profiles here by just a moonshot. And that's not something we take lightly and, we just kind of looked at that with the relativity situation. We looked at our breadth situation. Um, 
you know, we also have to keep in mind that the, the kind of the tempered version of, of the S&Ps right now, um, you know, there are the strength in the dollar, some of the things that are going to be associated with that, which are any of the international type related or multinational publicly traded companies in the U.S. are going to have to basically shave off. And I've heard this figure anywhere from 12 to 15 percent um, just from the dollar alone. So, you know, you've got a you got a situation where it's not a rosy picture for the U.S. relative to some of the other things. And to be honest with you, I'm going to show you the the Shanghai as we we're talking about this. Now, Joey, the other day, and, you know, kind of told you to, as we had him on the show, kind of put your seatbelt on and uh, and look for this thing to just kind of spin out of control, possibly, if we just start clearing some of these levels. And look at this reversal today alone. We're up in the 4,200 area. And we talk about, you know, like if we're that far above profiles, we always talk about from a technical sense, we, you know, we had this profile up here well down below price action. We always talk about that's a very, very bullish sign in general. And, you know, how do you catch the wave up if you got nothing to key off of there? Well, we go down a time frame. We're looking at our 240s now. We talked about 4046 will be, you know, the next – you know, 240 regulation of the trade up type uh, support area. So as we look at this last four hours of the uh, the Shanghai here, we're looking at the bottom was 4046, and we'd reached a low of 4031. So with a little bit of noise factor, you've always you know in a very volatile market like the Shanghai right now, you've got to remember um, to give yourself a little bit of a noise factor around these inflection points, and you know look what's happened since we reached that. 4,000 area basically we're up 200 points in the Shanghai and what is that that's about a 5% move believe it or not well you can believe it it's mathematically true actually so um, we're going to take a look at the DAX because uh, the DAX has been really really happy and dependent upon what the euro is doing now let's just flash the euro um, this is something where you know we talked about waiting for some movements back up into this 10702 area. We got that the other day, two days ago. Now we've kind of crowded this, compressed against it. And this is not the type of situation you want to see if you're looking to short this market. Um, now we've kind of poked our head above. And as you see this compression, kind of higher lows here going up into the inflection point, you want to see price action get away from these levels. And when we kind of you know, get away from it and kind of go right back to it and bounce around and crowd it and kind of consolidate. Um, you can kind of, in, in a classical technical analysis frame of mind, you can actually look at that as somewhat of a kind of pennant flex. I know this is not the classic one, but, you know, the, the move up, the, the flag pennant type situation. But this is similar type concept. So now we've gotten back above 10702 uh, and – the highs right now have been 107.47. Let's look at our weeklies. Um, again, nothing new to talk about there. Still, the long-term trend is down. Uh, but let's look at how you know the DAX has really re reacted to that repricing. And you know the, the Europeans have been just ecstatic over some of the currency devaluations over there, allowing them. I mean, this has been a long time coming. Um, it's been almost held back artificially but you know as the floodgates have opened you know look what's happened to the dax we had a new profile up here yesterday right um and we kind of crowded that a little bit and we talked about the only way you could short the dax was to get back down below one or 12 205 70. we looked at that as support support was broken and stop outs have happened and the next time and the dax obviously is in a big uptrend so the next time you can buy the DAX or try to buy the DAX 11981 let's just call it 12,000 um, you've got to keep your eye on the euro though because as the euro passes some of those borders it may retrace back up into those weekly unfair highs don't think it can't a lot of people are short the euro right now I mean I don't, I don't know anybody who's actually long the euro in fact but as we look at this going back to the euro Next stop on the euro may be 110.52.53 if we get a daily close back in the fair auction. Doesn't mean it has to go there, but just be prepared mentally. <clears throat> Don't try to hang on to something, <clears throat> excuse me, that maybe you can temper some pain 
stop yourself out, re-enter the trade. And, and some of these people out there say, well, what if I get out of the trade and then it heads south? Well, you can always get back in the trade below some of these inflection points on the short side. So, um, you know, that's just kind of the way I look at it. I'm a relatively stingy trader when it comes to these profiles. And I don't mind kind of going against the norm. Um, uh, you know, buy low, sell high. Sometimes I'll, you know, buy high and then have to sell low um, just to kind of, you know, stay in tune with the trading plan. And I know that sounds crazy, but, you know, we're talking about, you know, stopping yourself out here, buying high and then selling low again as we get back down below the border, being that it might be okay to get our, you know, toe back in the water on this. So that's kind of the way I'm looking at the euro. And then you've got to kind of pay attention to that movement up as far as the DAX is concerned. All right. So <clears throat> let's take a look uh, quickly at – we don't look at this that often. Uh, this is the CAC 40. This is our weekly view. This is our daily view on the CAC 40. This is obviously the French uh, index. You know, this is our new profile we had up here yesterday. Um, we could come back and try to retest this 5185. Be prepared for that. I think that's actually going to happen. That's the next time you'll have a chance to look at this as support. Um, and we're also going to look at the FTSE. Oh, that's the uh, that's the Italian. Hold on, just a second. Excuse me, guys. Here we go. Here's our FTSE 100, um, and not as euro dependent, but just kind of a sympathy trade. We've got 69.53. Uh, as support on the long term weekly on the on the on the FTSE, so you know be aware of that. Be aware if that gets broken, and especially on a weekly close below, we're going to sit on the sidelines on the long side on that. Um, but uh, you know the euro could rattle around here if we get a close above 107.02 today, and uh, just you know be prepared for the fallout if that happens. All right, let's take a look at Treasuries. This is really really interesting how you know there's just such a bid in this marketplace and this is the type of action just like we looked at the euro kind of coming in that in this inflection point that you know we talked about just staying away from the short side on u.s treasuries for god knows how long i mean i think tom and i've been talking about that forever but now you've got this crowding action against this inflection point if you have any fall it's almost you know s and p's go up notes and bonds go sideways s and p's go down notes and bonds seem to have a a launching pad underneath them. Um, so this is the 129.24 area. If we get a close above there, this thing could be off to the races again, believe it or not, and rates could be lower based on that alone. So we'll be right back, guys. Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over $70. 5% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30 day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John takes your phone calls now. 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 Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. And, and by all means, feel free to. Pick up the phone, give us a call. We'd love to hear from people. We like to try to solve some problems real time and do some real time analysis. Right now, uh, kind of opted out on this the last couple of days. We're not talking about the British panel. We want to look at this 147 27. Actually, Eddie was on the show yesterday and he actually, or was it, was it yesterday or the day before? I eh, can't remember. Um, he was a big proponent of kind of waiting for this to bust through those weekly unfurlows and daily unfurlows and trying to catch a bid on this from the long side. And I was, you know, hey, let's, you know, this dollar looks relatively strong. Let's try to pick the battle on the short side again, turn the wrench. Um, but that's the cool thing is, you know, we had a confluence of, of levels, 147. Let me just go to the scanner here really quick. Um, let me pull up our... Let me get rid of – you guys are going to love this thing. Uh, let's see. Currencies, where are they? They're somewhere on here. There they are. Uh, yesterday or the day before, I think it was yesterday, we were looking at the GPB USD, and we had two bottoms there. I don't know if you guys remember that. And Eddie had kind of plainly stated that, uh, you know, he had kind of picked up that euro trade the other day by just the scanner just pops up. And by the way, it's not a static situation. Even on the web scanner, it automatically refreshes about every 60 seconds. And and kind of re if you have a filter in, it actually resorts the filter and everything else. But, you know, we had these two bottoms sitting here and like, OK, well, that's something we need to take a look at. And when we took a look at it, we were kind of sitting right in there, kind of nudging this. And that was in combination. That was our daily. That was in combination with our weekly there. So, uh, you know, hats off to Eddie. This thing did pop. And, the, you know, the, the thing is, is when you have two inflection points lining up and sometimes three, when those borders are crossed, there's a lot of people covering that are that are wrong. Um, and, you know, you get those type of just kind of significant moves up. We had about, a, what is this, 100 and 
130 140 150 pip move to the high up there is that right yeah that's about eh, it's more than that actually wow okay so where does this thing stop and where are the short-term targets or intermediate targets you've got 149 and let's pull this over so you see it well why am i doing that i'll go back to the scanner here we go um we've got 149.81 is and as you mouse over these cells you'll get those inflection points you know and you really don't need to be honest with you our indicators uh on the boxes i mean we've got 14 other indicators that are great but you get those those boxes profiles i like to call them boxes those all that information on the inflection points here you know steve rhodes was saying something earlier uh i want to kind of revisit a little bit a lot of people a lot of institutions just use this breadth indicator as the sole thing that guides their portfolio when to hedge, when to maybe back off the gas pedal a little bit, when when to go go to cash. I mean, this is you know if you use our weeklies and dailies breaths, which is kind of a you know the internal summation, um, you know you really get the tide of the marketplace. We've done a lot of back testing with this, and some of those guys that are on portfolios, they're they're not really. <laughs> they're not really traders they're they're kind of salesmen and um and they they've got a lot of money they've amassed and uh i'm talking billions of dollars it's hard to move that kind of that amount of money in a short-term type scenario a lot of times so they wait for kind of you know changes in the tone of the market and uh that means that you know they a lot of these guys are usually in high beta stocks and they'll kind of use s something like this to try to figure out you know when are they kind of rolling their portfolio around but one of the things steve said while i go uh on the den was you know it's kind of it, it, you know we've kind of been nowhere since january one we're into almost into may here now and um you know this has been a kind of buy the index and uh go play golf since 2009 um now we may be coming into a stock pickers market finally and i've heard that term so many times but i i'm kind of with steve on this one i think that's going to be the case and the scanner allows you to come in here and you know let's just say you know we we were we were looking the other day case in point to try to find stocks that really were not cooperating with the move up and i'm gonna go to our, below the box here uh, i'm gonna show only matching results and you know we should see some of the usual suspects that we had really been looking at before um csx uh let's just i'm sure walmart's on here it's probably still on here Let's go down to the W's. And there's our star player, Walmart, that we've been talking about. Red, 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 red across all time frames. Whole Foods is on there now. UPS, look at this. We're going to come back and revisit a couple of these uh, instruments that we've been looking at lately as weak stocks and a strong market and how this pullback, you know, may be treating these particular instruments. We'll be right back, folks. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. 
Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool taking something that's good for you something specifically formulated to help with weight loss better sleep stress reduction and the need to detox nico our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment but today our food sources no longer contain the vitamins minerals and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong that's why we need primal edge daily nutrition it includes a special blend of ionic soil-based vitamins minerals fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form primal edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. We're going to take a look at the Australian dollar right now. Um, something that's uh, been on my radar screen from the short side, and now we've kind of gotten back and crossed some of the the congestion above 77.19 and that's coupled with the the unfair lows at 76.93 so we talked about a little bit of a demilitarized zone i guess between 76.93 and 77.19 so uh that kind of buffer area there that was something we were leaning against on the short side got a couple of good trades down there and now that has been something again you know, on a very long-term basis, um, this is what could happen. Let me uh, pull up our chart here so you can see it. We could at least retrace back up into 78.94 now. So that's what stops are for. You got to be willing to kind of take the medicine, get in there and turn the rinse the same way again. It's, it's you know, this is just the way trading goes. Um, and uh, you don't want to try to hold on to things too long because, you know, anything can do anything. We've, if you've been looking at these screens for long enough you probably have realized that um the australian dollar you know again um i think it's kind of a a relief bounce if 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 nothing else we've got uh it's not one of the components of the dollar so you know it's, it's kind of a sympathy situation here but we're definitely breaking from a technical uh, technical analysis standpoint this is something that hasn't happened in the aussie dollar in a while so uh again there may be some people covering you got to consider that it may go higher uh let's take a look while we're talking about the currencies here let's just go down into the dollar again really quick uh 
Okay, so we we had kind of talked. Uh, Ninety eight seventy five was going to be support on the dollar. We had that close yesterday below. That means it was, you know, getting back into the fair auction, the balanced area, so to speak. And we came back and retested that today. So you know, we could kind of chop around down in here for a while. I think it's going to be relatively directionless as long as we are in that balanced area. And that's something you know, as a trader, you got to pay attention to. And that's obviously going to affect the uh, the carry trade with the yen. So let's take a look at that. And as our yen populates, you know, we're coming down into something that's we talked about 1891. That's going to have to hold on the yen. I'm not a big fan of going short the yen. I'm not a big fan of going short the dollar. So I'm going to have to wait until the dollar crosses that 98.75 area and the yen. Um, you know, we've got a buy point at 118.91, um, and we talked about breakouts above 120.34. That's all I'm paying attention to on this particular product. Okay, so we are at a battle point down here on the end. It's worth taking a shot. Dollar could kind of rip around here in the balanced area, and um, the yen could go lower. But remember to put your stops in. I think, you know, this is not a bad area to try to buy support on the end. On the longer term, on the end, though, You've got major, major support at 117.74. So if it doesn't work at 119, you've still got another 150 pips lower, a chance to put back on the buy support, buy the dip kind of thing on the end. Okay. Uh, let's go back into the scanner for just a second. We looked at, you know, these are, these are stocks. I did a little filter. These are stocks trading below daily unfair lows. And, you know, we look at Avalon Bay Communities. That's been one that's been just Bed Bath & Beyond. These are these are kind of the the usual suspects of the things we've been talking about of trying to prepare ourselves. Family Dollar, FedEx, UPS. Um, and these a lot of these stocks haven't opened yet. So, um these kind of showed their hand early. Let's take a look at a couple of the usual suspects we've been following, the Walmarts of the world. Let's pull up Walmart. Let's see how it's reacting pre-market and uh, if we can get our charts to come up here. Michael, we're going to have to raise the instance here, I believe, on this one. Okay. Um, let's, we don't have any. Let's see here. Let me see if I can get it off our scanner. I believe I can. Let me get down to the bottom here. Let's see. Warehouser, Walmart. Let's see. Let's pull up Walmart really quick. As you can see, Walmart all reds across the board. This has kind of been something we've been paying attention to. Now we're below our 60-minute profiles. And as we... <laughs> One of the programmers that's very behind the Scanner Plus version is happy I'm showing it. He was just... Uh, Okay, I, I can't get our – okay, here we go. Let's just – here's our real-time prices here. It looks like pre-market we're trading maybe 79.65 on Walmart. So we had been talking pretty religiously about banking off of this 83.48 on the long term and just letting this thing drift down, which is exactly what it's doing. And this is, you know, again, the relative strength trading concept is, you know, markets going up. You're trying to find things that are, uh, you know – not cooperating, but also, you know, in, in that instance, things that are trading at inflection points or trading below profiles to try to take advantage of those. If the market does turn south, and it did in this instance, you know, these are the things that might be worth taking a shot on. So 81.87, let's just call it 82, was that intermediate leverage point on the short side. Now 79.74, this is, you know, we, we talk about trades that work out, and we talk about trades that don't work out all the time. And this is one that was just like watching paint dry but uh somebody told me a long time ago successful trading is supposed to be boring i always try to keep that in mind if you're sitting in front of the screen to get excitement um you're probably going to pay for the excitement at some point so uh just maybe remember that uh let's take a look at ups boring is good Let's take a look at UPS. Um, this is one that you know kind of bucked the trend a little bit here. Straight 96.80. It looks like pre-market. That's not you know kind of this going to the moon here. But uh, this is one we talked about. It's showing its hand early. Uh, I still like this as a short very very much. We had this profile appear above price action. 
Uh, I think this thing could go a lot lower. Here's FedEx, FDX, just kind of ones in the scanner too. Uh, you know, let's see. Now we're sitting below profiles. Uh, let's just see where we are pretty market here. 169.32. So again, now you got a leverage point, possibly 170.15 sitting there on FedEx. It's actually in the scanner this morning because of pre market. And let's go back to that. Travelers was kind of on that radar screen earlier. Uh, let's take a look at a couple of uh, Whole Foods markets, WFM. This is just ugly. WFM. Okay, so yesterday we had kind of, and the day before, we had kind of broken below these profiles. This was in the scanner on the weekly and the daily, and now pre market. Let's just see if we got any quotes pre market. 5016. Um, so you caught a you know, eh, point and a half, two point move off of this, playing the relative strength game. And we can also find some really, really good longs here. But let's let's also go back to the scanner right now again. And let's take a look at uh, some of the other PCG we talked about. Uh, talked about some banks, L3 Communications. We looked at that yesterday. Um, by the way, before I forget, uh, when Joey was on the show the other day out of Hong Kong, he was really kind of preaching the, uh, the group, the 3D printer groups type scenarios if you remember and uh he had talked about triple d when we were kind of consolidating around here uh this thing has moved up and that's a 10 to 12 percent move pretty actually it's more than that 32 let's see 27 28 32 uh, my math's not that good this morning that's a 12 percent move guys um in a couple of trading days on a stock that's just been and, and let's just kind of look back at the history of this this is uh 3d systems corp and we kind of use these dailies to regulate the weekly trade down but look at this it's the first time we've broken stride in a while getting above profiles in a long while and uh when you see that and you see the consolidation above the profile you you technically might have and it didn't didn't hurt that they've had some conferences lately that have helped the heck out of this but uh nice call by joey really really sweet move and something that had gotten its head handed to it uh, but it started showing, showing some technical damage on the north side and that's just uh really cool how that worked out but what do you do with it now we are getting now into in my opinion a profit taking situation because we're getting into that this is a new profile for this week on triple d and as you see i'm gonna blow this up a little bit and again uh, i want to go to the scanner and i want to pull up 3D if it's in here. Let me see. Actually, let me kill this sort. And let me go down into, I don't think this, I don't even know why I was looking. I know this is not in the scanner. Um, but as we, as we look at the inflection points on the weekly, those weekly on for highs are 32, 32. We've reached a high this week of 32 let me just move this down here so i can see it 32 35 so we we satisfied the unfair highs on the weekly we broke technical damage on the dailies around 28 um you gotta at least be looking to take some off the table at this stage on triple d okay you don't i don't know if you want to buy this into weekly unfair highs if we get a weekly close above there that's really going to confirm and again going back in time this has just gotten crushed um, first technical damage on a long-term basis, you're going to have to pay attention to that and possibly start looking at that as the support area. Yep, I can look at natural gas. Let me pull it up. And what month do you guys want to look at? Because there's some... Uh... Let me get to natural gas. Where the heck is it? There we go. Uh, are we looking at May still? All right. I'm going to pull up May on natural gas. You know, I I had been, you know, technically very bearish on this for a while, especially when we kind of closed below this 360 area on this May contract, came back and retested it. And, you know, that's the, 
the leverage point. You just hope it goes. You, you, I mean, you hope we break out of profiles and go back and retest them. Those are like really powerful moves. Our automated systems just rely off that concept altogether. Um, but on this, you know, conversely, on the short side, you want to have those breakouts on the downside and then retest former support now resistance. And that really, and you don't have any weekly closes here. Um, in fact, you went. Weekly closes um, showing anything different here. We went into, into these unfair highs around 304 rounded off. Um, and that really, just to continue the downtrend, really gave you a really good opportunity on the short side. We rattled around in here, broke through again. I'm not a big fan of going long natural gas right now until we clear that weekly 2680. Now, on the daily, on the on the shorter term situation, we had the profile appear down below, and I'm going to point this out to you because the scanner had this written all over it. We're in a downtrend. We get the orange bar, and what does that mean? That means we're going to have a new balanced area appear again. And again, you know, we're strictly talking technical analysis here. I have not been in the Society of Natural Gas Producers magazine digging through. <laughs> digging through the local library and trying to figure out fundamentally where natural gas is going to go. Um, this is a show about technical analysis, and we can get into fundamentals hardcore if you'd like to sometime. But, you know, we yesterday, uh, day before yesterday or yesterday, we did break stride for the first time in a long time above the 20, or excuse me, 257 rounded off area. And we've gone back and retested this morning. Does this mean this could go higher? You know, on this on this time frame, yes. Are your where are your targets on? And I think your targets are 268 right now initially. Um, but we're going to have to wait and see if we get if we get above 268 and a close on a weekly above 268 to really get happy about digging in and buying natural gas. But the good news is, right now, in my opinion, you can orient stops around this trade uh, below 2.573, if that makes sense to you. It's pretty. You know, we're kind of in the middle of a little situation here right now. It's kind of still non-directional to me until we clear and close above 268. I know you might be saying, well, Jesus, it's been down below 250. Um, why are you telling me we got to get above 268 to buy it? I mean, that's just more confirmation type moves that I like to see. And uh, I, I can't... Um, you know, go down here and try to be the guy who picks the bottom or the top on markets anymore. It's just, you know, it's a tough game, put it that way. So, again, the orange bar, the new profile, that really gave a new demand area down below to really pay attention to. And it looks like we've broken that on the intermediate time frame. All right. So, we're going to look at, uh, we got about 15 seconds left before the next break. We're going to kind of pull up Apple. I get some emails about this on a day-to-day -day basis. I think half the country of the United States is, is long Apple right now. But uh, when we come back from break, we'll take a look at it. And uh, you guys hang in there because we're coming right back. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n-a-d-e-x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors.
Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, Unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Catch Steve Rhodes as he teaches techniques on technical analysis using pattern recognition, celestial charting, Fibonacci, and other tools. The Trader's Edge, next on TFNN. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Uh, we're going to kind of forego Apple right now. Apple's in the middle of a trading range. I'll just, the people that are sending me emails about that, um, you know, again, the inflection points are in the scanner. Um, we talked about those, those yesterday, uh, and you can look at the archive show. I want to get into crude oil because we only got about four minutes left. Crude oil was one that, you know, we just said, you know, where's the risk? Where's the risk? The risk is to be short this thing. And we got that pop, and we got a huge move, as you know, yesterday. Um, Gotten in, got into this 57 area. I just, I was blown away. We kind of moved that quickly, that fast. But like we talked about, you know, the supply situations, the, uh, you know, the the, the negative tone from the the latest idiots running the hedge funds that are, you know, usually on the wrong side of the market and and piling in in an over leveraged fashion, all short. We talked about this thing can just kind of. You know, get through some congestion, namely at 5367 area. This thing could move up violently because a lot of people will be covering, getting away and out of that. You know, finally, the technical damage possibly above 5367, and that happened. Um, so, what do you do now? Um, I'm not so sure this is over. Here's our 240s. We've got 55 sitting down here. This is also in the scanner. This is support area 5504. I'm not so sure this thing is finished. You know, so. We talked about, you know, beware of this move happening. Put your stops in. Eddie was very right on the British pound. We we looked at this uh, crude oil trade together. He decided to kind of get delta neutral and really lock this thing down because this could happen. Um, and uh, 
thank God, you know, this is, uh, this is something that, uh, you know, we had about a $4 move really quick and that's, well, even a lot more than $4. Where was this thing at? We started breaking out 48. My God, what is that? What do you know? It's a 20% moving crude oil. Oof. All right. We're going to move to gold. we got to cover all the usual suspects here. Some guys out there trading gold, I think. All right. Well, you know, Tom was on the show the other morning, two mornings ago, and we talked about this 1182 area, 1183. This is a really good prime example of letting the market come to you to pick a battle. All right. And that's why we really love these inflection points. And now with the dollar starting to eh, turn around, maybe you had a little lower gold, uh, which has been hanging in there and like, you know, higher lows profiles. Look at these profiles, higher profiles, higher lows on profiles, higher lows on price action. And and every time defending those support areas, uh, you know, we've talked about not opting in on the short side on gold and trying to pick the longs and uh, targets still haven't been met 1215 up top i think that's ultimately going to happen and then on the weeklies we've got 1229 sitting up there so what do you do now here is a picture of the 240s uh you know if you want to be you know that 1200 area is a big area I might lighten up a little bit here and just prepare for another pullback into the 240 possibly area, but you got to keep your eye on the dollar. Um, if this consolidates up here and we have a new 240 profile, I think we're probably going to end up hitting that 1215 and maybe that 1229 area easily on gold. And again, this is going to be a uh, loving the dollar sell off type situation if that happens. So just kind of keep your eye on both of those products. Uh, we wanted to look at the 30-year because we covered the 10-year. We got about 20 seconds. 30-year uh, is a little more attractive than the 10-year to me, and we kind of just edging up, edging up. This is really, in my opinion, setting up for another little pop on the 30-year. So uh, keep that in mind, and that may be stock market S&P futures related also. So keep your eye on those two products. Guys, you've been great. Steve Broke next. You will really enjoy listening to him. He's a smart guy and he's got great information. So stay tuned. We'll be back again tomorrow. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.